Hi there guys, uh, we're going to be looking at some language today and those of you who know me will know that I absolutely love teaching language um, and I don't think I share that with many of you probably but I'd like to think that that can change or at least a few of you get a little bit excited when it comes to language. Uh, but we're going to start off with abbreviations and acronyms. We're also going to be looking at spelling, we're going to be looking at homophones and homonyms as well as homographs and we're going to end off with direct and indirect speech. And none of these things may be new to you, but it's always good to kind of just recap and uh, kind of get the cobwebs out and just to do a bit of a refresher course um, if you're feeling a little bit rusty in terms of that. All right, so let's look at abbreviations and acronyms. And I've got my highlighter here. And the reason why is because it's always good to add some color to your page. Um, just makes it a little bit more endearing to want to uh, study. Um, and of course, you want to highlight some important points. So we go abbreviation shortened or brief form of a word usually ends in a full stop okay so you're not uh, new to things like this okay you're used to seeing professor and and p and wednesday and pg and things like that okay but what we do need to look at is why is there a period there or a full stop why is that okay so let's look professor professor ends in an r so the word ends in an r but the abbreviation ends in an f now, because this letter and this letter are not the same, we put the full stop or the period. That period shows that there's more to come. Okay, there's more to this word. All right. Similarly, with page, ends in an E, but there's no E in its abbreviation, so we put the full stop. So when don't we put the full stop? Well, we don't put the full stop if the abbreviation ends in the last letter of the shortened word. So let's look at Mr. And a lot of people make this mistake. Mr. ends in an R. The abbreviation ends in an R. Because the letter of the word, the last letter of the word, and the last letter of the abbreviation is the same, we don't put a full stop there. Same with doctor. There's a D, there's an R, ends in an R, ends in an R, no full stop. Street ends in a T, ends in a T, no full stop. So it's very important to note that. Okay. Um, in modern usage, if the initial letters are used, the full stop is omitted. So what we used to do is, uh, if it was the United States of America, uh, people used to go U.S.A. But we no longer do that anymore. Uh, we just say USA, United States of America. All right, so similarly, RSA, ANC, etc. All right, exercise one wants you to write out the complete form of each of the underlined abbreviations. And uh, I'm going to put in the description of this video a link to uh, these documents uh, via Google Drive so that you can access them and print them. All right, Reverend James Butler. So this is Reverend. And I'm going to do this one with you. So R-E-V-E-R-E-N-D. Reverend. Okay, member of the clergy, a little bit like a priest. All right. Now, Reverend ends with a D. But reverend, as in the abbreviation, ends with a V. So since those two last letters are not the same, we put there the period, the full stop. All right. Or C Church stands for Roman Roman Catholic. Capital R, capital C. Okay. And of course, spelling is very, very important. All right. I'm not going to do any of the others. As you can see, there are 10 sentences there for you to do. Okay. We're happy. Exercise 2 wants you to match the abbreviation on the left with their meanings on the right. Okay, so you're going to just write the letter here that corresponds. Okay, now moving on to acronyms. How are they different? Well, an acronym is if the initials of a group of words are used to form a new word, it is called an acronym. Okay, so in other words, it's pronounced as it's spelled. It's an actual word. We say it. All right. So I'm not going to say, oh, he has A-I-D-S. I'm going to say he has AIDS. I say the word. Even though these letters are from the whole term, A-I-D-S. I say the word. So, for example, S-A-B-C is not an acronym because I have to say each letter. I don't say SAPC. Okay. So if I say it as a word, it's an acronym. All right. So exercise three wants you to write down the acronyms for the following 
um, as soon as possible. Now, this is a bit of a debatable one because some people say ASAP, in which case it's an abbreviation, but some people say ASAP, which is kind of like a word, in, in which case it becomes an acronym. All right. Um, and notice as well, it's not always as simple as just taking the first letter of each word and creating um, the acronym. For example, Southwestern Township is actually Soweto. So there are letters there that is not just SWT. All right, so just be careful with that. Um, th the curriculum that you're currently doing is called the CAPS curriculum. C-A-P-S. Again, I don't say C-A-P-S. I say CAPS. I say it as a word, which makes it an acronym because it's a new word. All right, so there are eight there that you can do. Then we're coming on to spelling. Now, I often see a, a lot of people of all ages making spelling mistakes, and unfortunately, it's going to cause you to lose marks unnecessarily, really, in, in your creative writing and even your language papers and literature papers. So, um, my plea to you is, I know everybody is not a very good speller, you know, spelling isn't everybody's forte, but uh, there are certain things that uh, you can learn, certain words, particularly terms, um, and I think it's just a, about practice uh, very often. And uh, of course, I encourage you to read as much as possible, but certainly as well to, to practice uh, spelling, especially words that you know that you struggle with. All right. And of course, the more that you uh, indulge in the kind of exercises like this, where you have to identify spelling errors, the better you'll become. Okay. So exercise one, number one, two donkeys carried our baggage up the mountain, supposedly, uh, except that's not what it says, because... If we look here, we'll see donkeys is incorrect. It should be donkey s like that. Okay, but there's also another word, mountain. That's not right. It should be mountain. So that's m o u n t a i n. Okay, and then what I want you to do is when you know that it's right, I want you to tick it. And the reason for that is two, three months down the line, uh, if it's not ticked, you're going to wonder, are these just my answers or did we mark this? All right, you don't want to learn things that are maybe not correct. Okay, uh, number two, I often read bedtime stories to my little sister. S whoops, stories, that's incorrect. That should be stories spelt like that. Okay, that's the only word in that sentence. So, one. So you can see that there's not always one word, sometimes there are two words per sentence, and there are 12 sentences in that exercise. Then exercise two says, choose the correct words in brackets. So now I want you to, uh, to be able to, to see two words that are both spelled correctly, but which word do you use? Okay, so let's look at this first one. The cat lay in the sun licking its paws. Now this it's, it's apostrophe s the apostrophe has the function of contracting two words in other words a contraction making it smaller so that apostrophe is standing in for one or more letters and in this case it's standing in for i in it is all right it's standing in for the i so i can't say the cat lay in the sun licking it is pause that makes no sense so it must be this one it's pause possession okay no apostrophe Okay, so get my pen, go tick, alright, then number two, do you think I could lend or borrow your textbook? Very uh, common mistake this, I lend something to somebody, so I'm going to say lend is I lend it to you, but I borrow something from someone, I'm going to borrow your pen, so you can lend my book versus can I borrow your pen? All right. Ah, no, look what I'm doing. Borrow from, not pen. From. Okay. I borrow from somebody. Right. Okay, the rest you're going to do. Number 10, uh, all the way on your own. All right. Then we're going to look at exercise 3. Provide the plural form of the following words. Okay. Plural form. In other words, more than one. Addendum. Start off with addendum. Addendum is singular. Addendum becomes a dendums. Add an S. Simple as that. Or we also accept a 
Den de. Okay, so where's my pen? I go tick. All right. Um, that should actually be like that. And the rest I'm gonna you can do on your own. All right. I'm gonna leave that up to you. Exercise four: Provide the opposite gender for the following. Gender obviously being male versus female, and I want the opposite. So brother-in-law is gonna become sister-in-law. Then uh, Colt is going to become Philly. Tick. Next one, very interesting. I'm not going to give it to you, but comedian does in fact change. This is a male. There's a word for a female comedian. All right, and there are 18 words there for exercise four. Okay, moving on to the next section homophones, homonyms, homographs. All right. People often get confused between uh, the different types. All right, so it's it's quite easy. If we look at homophones, homo, homo, same, phone, sound, all right? So homophone, homophone, it sounds the same, but it is spelt differently and it has different meanings. So for example, right versus right, eight versus eight, two versus two. I'll give you another one which is a very common mistake and that is theirs versus theirs okay this there over here is possession it belongs to them this theirs over here is there is because there's my apostrophe this is a contraction standing in for the letter i so there is i'll give you another one waste versus waste this waste means to uh, not use things or throw away things unnecessarily and this waste is around your abdomen around your hips your waist okay homonyms words that where's my highlighter words that sound the same whoops sound the same and are spelt the same okay but have different meanings. All right, so let's look can, park, watch. It's also very important to note that the part of speech changes too. So let's look at can, okay? The word can. Now can can be like a cool drink can, in which case that is a common noun, or can as in I can do something as in an auxiliary verb also known as a modal verb which indicates that it is possible to be done all right park i go to a park as in a noun uh, a grassed area with benches and swings and things or i park my car i'm doing it as a verb all right watch i wear on my wrist versus physically watching something with my eyes okay homographs let's look homographs words that have the same spelling but sound different okay so bass the fish versus bass opposite of treble lead you know you walk your dog on a lead or you lead the way versus lead wound versus wound okay exercise one provide a homophone for each of the following words so like homophones and so I'll go up here I can check my definitions okay it must sound the same but it must be spelt differently so this bear here this is like a grizzly bear so homophone for bear is b-a-r-e bear as in uh, there's nothing on it okay bear necessities or you are bear the wall is bare uh, it's plain there's nothing on it all right okay birth obviously like childbirth versus Birth, B-E-R-T-H. In other words, you get a five birth caravan. In other words, people. It can take five people. Okay. Exercise two. Again, homophone. Construct a sentence of your own for each of the following words, indicating you know the meaning of the word. Okay. So here I have that flare. Now I must use the homophone of that word and use that word in a sentence of my own, which shows me that you know what that word means. So I'm going to just give you the word here to help you along. This flare is like if you have a natural talent or tendency for doing something really well, you're said to have a flare. It's like you have a flare for writing. 
but the flare that you want to shoot up into the sky to signal for help for example f l a r e so now you must write a sentence using that flare to show that you know what that word means so you could say the captain ordered the crew member to shoot up a flare for help or something like that all right and there's seven of those words there and then exercise three it says for each of the words below provide a homonym and its meaning so you're like uh what's a homonym again you're going to look at your definitions and there you see okay sounds the same spelt the same different meaning sounds the same spelt the same so back here in other words uh opposite of chest and front you got your back okay now i must try and find a homonym for back so i'm gonna say back as in um, to return to go back okay and there's only four there so you can do the rest on your own and then exercise four finally says for each of the following homographs uh, provide two meanings so this one here produce to produce something to make something essentially and produce as in fresh produce fruit and vegetables whoops can't write fruit and vegetables okay that ref that is produce I'll do the next one with you refuse to not do something um, despite let's say not do something despite instruction refuse to do it let's say and refuse as in rubbish I'm gonna take out the refuse okay you get the refuse collectors Right, so there's six of those that you can do. Then, commonly confused homophones, that's just uh, for your observation. Um, very often uh, made mistakes, people make mistakes with these uh, three words there. All right, okay, particularly effect versus effect. Remember, effect is to act upon, it has an effect on me. It's with an A. But if it, if it is a, uh, a noun, like it's a result, the effects of this then it's an E. Alright, so when it's acting as a verb, it's an A. So that affects me badly, but it had a negative effect on me. Then it, it's a noun, it's an E. Alright, but you can read through that. And then finally, the last section, direct and indirect slash report of speech. Indirect and report of speech, same thing. Alright, so direct speech, the exact words are spoken by someone at that very moment in time like I'm quoting directly what he said the words are put in inverted commas Matthew said I need to buy a beret Matthew said that exact thing I need to buy a beret but now if I want to tell you two weeks from now what Matthew said to me that day then I'm gonna say Matthew said that he needed to buy a beret no inverted commas right so let's examine these two types of speech more closely and so there you can see um, an example but I've made a another example here I've made another example and let me just uh, zoom out a little bit here okay James said the internet is not working all right now that is direct speech because I see my inverted commas now coming back to the notes the notes say so to change direct speech to indirect speech I must remove the inverted commas okay I'm going to remove the inverted commas Thunk. there we go what else does it say it says get rid of the comma after said and add that get rid of the comma after said and add that all right what else does it say it says change the tense of the verb to the past tense so if it's is and it is not working it maybe it's working now because we this was two years ago so I would say the internet was not working all right pronouns it says in the first person and second person must change to third person well we don't have any pronouns here we only have James that's a proper noun all right um, and then five change the words indicating time and place for example um, we don't have any of those words here, so that's that. 
The only thing that's not making sense is that we have a capital letter in the middle of a sentence, which we don't want. So we're going to put there the, like that. And now we have our indirect speech sentence. James said that the in internet was not working. All right. I hope that makes sense. Okay. So let's have a look. And I'm going to have to zoom in a little bit. Okay, and I've got some is sticking out and things like that. Oh, my little, my little sticky notes. Let's get rid of these little punctuation marks and words from the previous uh, example. Okay, there we go. Right, six. If it's a question, add if or whether instead of that. So if I go back here, I would say James asked whether the internet was working okay so james asked whether the internet was working or james asked if the internet was working should the first word of a question be a question word for example who what when where why how use this word as the connecting word so here's an example jeremy asked dylan what time so my first word of what he said is a question word what time does the bus leave that becomes jeremy asked dylan what okay there i go so instead of saying if or whether i say what time the bus was leaving was leaving so the tense must always go to past tense right makes sense furthermore where are we going? asked Cade. Note the punctuation when I put the speak at the end. So I could say Cade asked, comma, where are we going? Question mark, close and go to commas, and that's that. But I can put it at the end as well. Notice that asked is a small letter and there's no comma or anything like that. If it weren't for the lightning, comma, close inverted commas. The comma is within the inverted commas. Small letter S said Daniel, comma, open inverted commas. This is the one sentence here. This is one sentence. So therefore, I can't start with a capital letter in the middle of the sentence here. So I make that a small letter because it's a continuation of what he's saying. The game would have continued full stop, close inverted commas. All right. Lastly, are we going to watch a movie tonight? Asked Josh. Again, I've put the speaker at the end. So I've got my question mark within what he says. Close inverted commas. There's no comma there, it's just asked Josh. All right. And then exercise one and exercise two at the bottom. The first exercise, I want you to rewrite the sentences in indirect or reported speech. And exercise two would be rewrite the following sentences in direct speech.